I will now talk about a different uh, type of hash functions that we call universal hashing. So what, why do we need universal hashing and what are they? Okay, so one of the issues with the two methods for designing hash functions we have seen, which are the multiplication and the division, is that these functions can be good in practice, but these are predetermined functions in the sense that we define the function and this is the function we are going to always use. So no matter what set of keys you give me, I'm going to use the function to, 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 to hash this set of keys. Okay, so while this function could work for some, uh, for some sets of keys in the sense that they will give us an average running time of O of 1, for some other sets of keys, sometimes you can imagine sets of keys that the, that, uh, that the functions are bad for. In particular, imagine a situation where we have a malicious user who knows this, uh, this hashing function. They can, they can easily des design a set of keys that will force the keys to, to, to hash to the same slot in the hash table. Okay, so you have n keys, one can design a set of keys such that all n keys will will uh, hash to the same slot and this is of course a problem because the running time will be on the order of n to just scan a list just to scan the list of, of a specific key there okay so this is where universal hashing comes into the picture universal hashing is about having a large set of functions of hash functions from which a, ha a function is drawn randomly at runtime okay so the the main issue is that we want to have we want to have a large set of hash functions from which a function a hash function is selected randomly at runtime. What do I mean by runtime? Is that in the application, so imagine that you have the application and you're running the program uh, on a new set of keys and the program needs to use hashing. So once the program runs, before it applies the hashing function, it selects one function randomly from that set. So if you run the program again on the same set of keys, you're not even guaranteed to have the same function applied again. Okay, so we will have, imagine that, that the program had, has at its disposal a, a set of million hash functions. And when you run the program, it's going to, you know, with probability one over million, it's going to choose one of those functions and it's going to use it for the hashing. Now, the, the function is not predetermined because it's all up to the, to the randomness in choosing that function at runtime. Uh, but also we want some specific property about the set of functions for them to be what we call universal, okay? So let's consider the set H, okay? Let H be the set of all, a set, sorry, not of all, this B and shouldn't be the set, should be. Let H be a set of hash functions hash functions from some universe u to a set of slots 0 to m minus 1 okay we say that h this set h is universal if for every pair for every pair of distinct keys k and l from u so they are distinct please be, be distinct k, k and l so k and l are not equal if for every pair of distinct keys we have the following property that if you look at the set functions the set of functions that map k and l to the same bucket or the same slot, then the, the size of this k 
cannot exceed one over m the size of the full func the full set of functions. So if we look at the set, the entire set, then this is at most one over m. Okay. So this means that if you choose a function at random from that set, then the probability of that of, of collision is one over m. Okay. So again, h is some set. Imagine that big H is a set with, with million functions. We say that this set is universal if for every pair of two distinct uh, keys, take two arbitrary keys K and L, count the number of functions under which K and L collide, and compute the set the, the size of that set of this function this size of uh, set of functions, divided by the total by the size of the total set. If it is smaller than or, or equal to one over m, then this is universal. Okay. So now, what's so special about this? Well, this gives us gives rise to a very important result here, which let h be a, a hash function function randomly chosen or selected from universal set of hash functions h okay and assume t which is of size m already has already has n hashed elements or n keys in it okay and we use chaining here we assume that we are we we deal with we resolve uh, collisions by chaining then if we are searching then if we are searching if we search for k and t and k is not in t, then the expected or the average number of length, the average length of n of h of k is smaller than or equal to alpha. Remember that alpha is n over m. And remember that n sub i is the length of the list connected at bucket i or slot i. Okay, so n sub h of k is the linked list, is the number of elements in the linked list in the slot to which key k was hashed. So if k is not in the tree, then the, the, the average length of the list where we are going to be searching, and we will not find it, but that's the list we are going to be searching, is at most alpha. And if k is in the, in the hash table, then the average length of this list of, of uh, h of k is at most 1 plus alpha, okay? Uh, so this is important here because what, what this is the, the, main, uh, the main result that's, that justifies the use of universal, uh, universal hashing because what this is saying that when we are doing search and we are using a function randomly selected from this set of universal set of, of uh, hash functions, then the running time of a search cannot be, can, is, is theta of alpha, or 1 plus alpha, okay? And if we have m operations, this is what, what results, you know, on average gives us, every operation will, will be on average O of 1. So what's the proof for this? As we saw before, the proof is probabilistic, and this is we also introduce, um, introduce you know, these indicator random variables to help us do the analysis. But before we do that, let's actually remind ourselves that since, since H is chosen, is chosen randomly from, from big H, and big H satisfies an important property, it follows that P of H of K equals H of L, that the probability that they will, we have a collision for k and l under this function is, is bounded by 1 over m, okay? So now let's introduce 
let's introduce this indi indicator random variables. Again, indicator means that takes values 0 and 1. Indicator random variables x, k, l for, again, for distinct, for every distinct keys k and l and u. So what are, what are these indicator functions? Again, they are going to be either 0 or 1. And they will be 1 if h of k equals h of l, if we have a collision. Otherwise, it is 0. Now, what's the probability of h of k equal h of l? Again, I just said that this is at most 1 over m. Okay? So, given that we know what the values of the random variable are, and each one of them what its probability, then it's easy to compute the, the expected value of a random variable, which will be, again, 1 times the probability of xkl equal 1 plus 0 times the probability of xkl equal 0. And this is 0 here. Now, I don't know what the exact value of the probability, but I know that this is less than 1 over m. Okay, because we just said that this is the probability of xkl equal 1. So given this, we now, so this is the average or the expected number, the expected uh, number of times that a key will, will uh, keys a k and l will collide. So let's introduce another one, introduce random variable yk to denote the number of keys, the number of keys that are different from k that has to, has to h of k, okay? So what is the number of keys that will collide with k, but different from k? So if you think about it now in terms of x, k, l, y, k is the sum of x, k, l, such that this L is in the, in the table because it's colliding. And we want, of course, L to be different from K. Okay. So again, let me actually erase here and write it cleanly. L is in the table and we have X, K, L. So if we know this, then the expected value of yk is the sum is the expected value of the sum of these and i can use the linearity of expectation linearity of expectation so this gives me the sum over l and t l is not k and x k l and we basically know that each one of these expected value of k l is less than or equal to m okay so this is L and T, L and 1 over M, okay? So the expected value of the number of keys that will collide with K is less than or equal to this summation of 1 over M. So the summation of 1 over M, this many times, okay? For every L and T and L is not equal to K. Now, what is the number of elements in this sum? How many times is 1 over M going to be be summed here. So we have two cases. Case one is that when k is not, imagine that, or assume that k is not in t, okay? So if k is not in t, then the number of elements uh, that in the list of h of k is, is that y, y sub k itself, okay? So because k is not in the, in the table, then it's not part of the list and the number of elements in that list is y of k. And in this case here, the expected value of the expected value of n of h of k is the expected value of y sub k, because again we said y, y sub k equals to n sub h of k. And this will be the expected value of the expected value of n sub h of k is going to be the expected value of of e of k of y sub k sorry 
And in this case also, we need to, f to figure out, again, if I want to figure out the number of times we are going to do this summation, I have to figure out what's the cardinality of the set L in T and L is not equal to K. Okay, so we know that the number of elements L in T, the number of keys in T is N. That's the number of keys that have been hashed. But since K is not in the table, we don't need to do anything. Okay, we don't need to subtract. K is not in the table. The table has N elements. Then we have N elements there. Okay, so this two results here that we have the, the I can now look at it as is less than or equal to the sum of 1 over m n times, okay? So this, which is alpha, okay? So this is the expected number of keys. This is the expected number of keys that will collide with k if k is not, that will collide if k is not in the, in the table, okay? What happens if k is in the table? Well, it's not much different here, but if k is in the table, now the size of this set here is no longer n, it is n minus 1, because I need to subtract 1 for that element there, okay? And, and in this case here, the n sub h of k is y sub k plus 1 here in this case, right? Because we have 1 for k itself, and n sub h of k, that's the, the other elements that are not equal to k. And again, for this set, L sub L is in T, and L is not equal to K. This is now N minus 1. Again, because we have, for L and T, we have N elements, but we have one of them is K itself, because K is in the table, so I need to subtract 1. So we end up with N minus 1 here. And in this case, we have the E of N of H of K is the expected value of yk plus 1, which is the expected value of yk plus 1, which is smaller than or equal to n minus 1 over m plus 1. And this here, if you look at it, it's n over m minus 1 over m and plus 1. And we assume that P is much, much larger than M, by the way. And this one here is O of N over M plus 1, which is O of alpha plus 1, okay? Which is, this finishes the proof of the theorem, because we wanted to prove that if K is not, if K is in T, it's O of alpha plus 1. And if K is not in T, it is O of alpha, okay? So this is really what, this is the most important uh, result about universal hashing. Because once we design a, a set of functions like this, that satisfies this property that, that the, the fraction of functions that map K and L to the same bucket is at most M, is one, of, one over M of the total set, then we get this running time of, or the, the, we get this result on the length of the list that is, that is attached to every slot on the hash table. Now, if you look at this, now even a malicious user cannot do anything about it because this result here is a, is a result that holds no matter what the, the input set of, of keys is because it has to do with just the set of functions, how they are designed, okay? So this is, this is basically, again, what, what universal hashing is. Just to, again, to, to summarize here that we need the set H, uh, set H of functions that satisfies that if you look at any set of subset of functions and that subset, all the functions in that subset lead to collision of K and L for, our, for any pair of K and L. And if you look at this divided by the total number of functions in the set, it's at most 1 over M, okay? Now, one question is, what type of functions we can design to, to do this job, or what kind of functions we can have to, to have universal hashing? So one example of such functions here is defined as follows. So we will define a set here, and I'm not gonna prove that they are, uh, that they satisfy the property of universal hashing here, but let consider, you know, we have, P, imagine that all the keys 
that take p to be a large prime number prime number such that all the keys all the keys are smaller than p okay so take p to be large enough so if the keys are all the way the keys that we are going to hash are bounded by million p should be a prime number greater than million okay so if we have this prime number here consider now consider two integers a and b such that a is between one and p minus one and b is between zero and p minus one Okay, so consider such a uh, pair of, uh, of numbers here. Then we can define the function h, the set h, to be all the h a of b, again, such that a is between 1 and p minus 1, and b is between 0 and p minus 1, and h how do we define h of b what what does h of a b do to key a k we basically take a k plus b this mod p and the result is mod n m sorry okay so this is a function this is a single function so if you give me a let's suppose you give me a to be uh, three and b to be 9, then h of 3, 9 of k is 3k plus 9 mod p, and this mod m. Again, p is a large prime number that is greater than the greatest key, and or greater than or equal to the greatest key. m is the number of, uh, the number of buckets or the number of slots in the hash table okay so if you look at this at this uh, set here if you look at this set this is a universal set of hash functions okay what does this mean that if you look at this you take any subset of this set h and any subset of this set h and you look at the number of functions in that set in that subset that make k and l collide for any pair of keys k and l that are distinct then that subset the size of that subset divided by the size of h is at most one over m i am not going to prove that <clears throat> the proof itself is written very nicely cleanly in your book again the important thing here from this one to see is that this is one way of designing such a set uh, of un universal set of hash functions and in particular here if you look at the size of h it's going to be defined for every a and every b right so if you look at a since it's between a and p between 1 and p sorry so we have between 1 and p minus 1 a has p minus 1 choices b has p choices okay so the cardinality of h is p minus 1 times p so if if p is hundred thousand then we have basically 100,000, almost 100,000 times 100,000, and that's 10 to the 10 possible functions. So it's a very large set, uh, set of functions there, okay? So again, this is just an example of a universal set of hash functions. The more important thing is to know that this definition of this definition here of universal hash functions give, gives rise to this result here that if you are searching for if we are looking at an element k and we look at the length of the the average length of a linked list of an element in that uh, of, a, of a slot in that uh, table is going to be at most alpha or alpha plus one depending on the k if it's in the table or not okay